what would you do with an extra $200 a month? How about an extra $500 a month? Real estate has been a proven way to make passive income. Sign up for one of our coaching programs and let us help you increase your passive income. Thank you for checking out our webinar on foreclosures and auctions, and here it is. Okay, so this um, is a sneak peek into a couple of the properties that are currently on foreclosure and auction in Southern Ontario. I did not pick any that was further north in, in Ontario because with all of us being in Southern Ontario, I figured that we would be more interested in Southern Ontario. So what I'm gonna do is bring up um, the presentation. So I'm gonna share my screen and you should be able to see it. So, so first off, thank you everybody for, for coming and attending on time. Uh, the presentation is only about 40, 45 minutes long. And I know with the snowstorm happening tonight, um, I, I wanna say thank you very much for being here on time. So, all right, so this pres presentation, like I mentioned, is just a sneak peek into a couple of the properties that are available in Southern Ontario. Um, before we get going um, into each of the properties, I do need to um, show this disclaimer and read it to you guys. Uh, the information presented is from sources to believe reliable. However, no responsibility is assumed for the accuracy of this information. The opinions or advice contained in this presentation should be verified with a third party. The originator, who's me, <laughs> of this presentation disclaims all responsibility and liability for the accuracy and content of the presentation and for any damages or losses arising from any inaccuracies and errors and shall not be liable for direct, indirect, consequential or special damages in connection with this presentation. The advice is for general information only. Before making financial decisions, I would suggest that you seek independent advice from your financial advisor, lawyer and accountant. So this applies for every presentation that I do, but I do have to put this out there. Okay, so the properties that we are going to talk about, there's five in particular that um, that we're going to go through. And the, the first one is uh, 25 King Street West, which is in the Blue Mountain area, uh, which is sort of like cottage country, but it, it is growing into a small town. Uh, the, and that's a foreclosure going at 47,000. The second location is 86 Dana Road in Vaughan, and that's going by auction. Uh, so one of the things that we're not going to be talking about tonight is the difference between a foreclosure and an auction. Um, it doesn't take that long to go through it, but it does take some time to explain the difference, what makes them different, and the risks associated with, with each one. So we're actually not going to be talking about that tonight. Okay, uh, we are going to hold a longer session uh, on February the 16th for anybody who's interested in learning more about foreclosures and auctions. And if you do want to, I highly suggest that you go and attend that uh, that presentation as well, which is an online presentation. And uh, after that presentation, you will be able to go and bid successfully on an auction or foreclosure if you want to. Uh, so, so just to let you know, in this presentation, we are going to go into these properties and talk about the properties themselves, but we're not going to talk about how we would find them um, or what the difference is between the auctions and the foreclosures. Okay, the third property is one at 110 Bella, I think, Avenue in Cambridge, and that's also going by auction. The fourth one is 2434 Sylvia Drive in Oakville, and this one's going by auction. You know, in uh, Oakville, in the last, I would say, three to four years, this is the third property that has come up. So, you know, maybe one, once a year, a property will come up in, in Oakville, okay? The uh, fifth one is 9154 Dale Road, and that's in Colwork, and that one's uh, going by foreclosure for 41000 Okay, and if we have time at the end, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll do a time check. If we do have time, then we'll also take a look at the sixth property, which is a vacant land in Petrola, and that one is going for $200. I know, you, you look at some of these numbers and you're like, well, wait, wait a minute, I can afford that. <laughs> okay, um, so we, we will try and go through these five properties. 
Okay, and then at the end, if we do have time, then we'll look at the, the sixth one. Okay. Okay, so let me just get out of this presentation and we'll go and look at the 25 King Street West in Blue Mountain here. Okay, so 25 King Street, and this is in Blue Mountain. Okay, so let me just bring this up a little bit bigger so you guys can see this. Okay, so this is one of the properties that is going for foreclosure okay this is in the blue mountain area and it's 20 sorry 28 king street sorry not 25 um and you could see on here it's listed for a minimum tender amount of forty-seven thousand uh, dollars. you could tell from the picture it's um a detached probably a three bedroom with a single garage Okay, and here's another view of the property. So it's actually a nice looking property. It's not too bad. Okay, and the information that's available says that it's 90 feet of a frontage space, 132 in depth. Um, it's not on the water or, or, or lake. Um, there's, there's a road access and uh, that there's a house on the property. Okay, uh, other than that, it gives you some zoning information. Okay, and you know, some, some other information on that one. And of course, there's information on how to get the title search on that. Okay, okay. so this is 28 King Street West in Blue Mountain area. And there's a picture of the property there. Uh, you could see the area, it's about um, 1200 meters squared, it's single detached. Okay, so right now, there, this property is estimated at about 222,000, okay? But as you can see, the range of the houses in that area are from 145,000 to 2 million, or $2.5 million, okay? And the average of the houses in that area are about uh, 470,000. Okay. So right now there are no no existing mortgages on the property, and the neighborhood trend you could see this line is sort of the average of the um, the the growth and the equity and the in the property value since two thousand and six till now. And as you can see, the housing prices in that area has just been going very sporadic, right? It, it's not consistent and and it's not flat line. Okay, and for houses similar in that area, you could see that in last year when they sold, they ranged anywhere from about 210 to 270 in price. Okay, and attached is a picture of where those comparables are. Uh, so you could see the, the waterway there, and this is the Blue Mountain area. Okay. So this is the uh, the first property. Okay, so now we'll go into the next one, which is 86 Dana Road. Okay. Okay, so this is the detached property here. And this one is in Vaughan. And so normally when I go and I look at these properties, I do a 360 view on the, on the property. So I go and I make sure that I know what's on the opposite end of the property as well. So that's just the street. And then across is more, more residential homes. And then just the, the other direction there. So as you can see, it's a nice little street area, a lot of full, you know, fully residential. And this is what it looks like on Google Map. So you could see where it is. And then here's another view. So here's the 407 here and the 400. So it's, you know, slightly north of the Toronto area. All right, so it's a great location. Okay. Okay, so the other thing here that we will look at is also the report on the value here. Okay, so there's the property here. Uh, the area on it is 581 meters squared. So it's not as, you know, it's about half the size as, as the other one. Uh, back in 09, 
it was at about 537,000. And this property now is valued at just over $1 million. Okay, so back in 09, the, um, the owner had taken out a mortgage of 429 with CIBC. And here's the neighborhood trend. You can see that it's been, it's following actually the average um, trend line here, so which is actually pretty good, right? And as well, uh, the historical comparisons back in last year when they sold, you could see it's the last three months or so of last year. Uh, they sold anywhere from 970 all the way up to 1.1 million. Okay. And that's the comparable there. So with this particular property, I actually did um, a cash flow analysis on it. So we'll go up to the very, very top here. Uh, so as you can see for 86 Dana Road, um, if you were to put in a bid price of $170,000, let's say, and so the buying price there was about 600, okay, then let's say you um, kept it for six months, did a bunch of renovations on it. Okay, so your purchase, oops, sorry, so your uh, total down payment requirement will be about 600,000. And then your purchase costs right there because that 600,000 plus, um, let's say if you needed $100,000 in renovations. And then if you were to flip that property, let's say in three months or six months and got sold it for 900, so you're lowballing it there because the other properties around there are 950 to 1.2 million. Let's say if you were to sell it at 900,000, 900, you would actually be able to walk away with about a forty thousand dollar profit okay um and that you know there's a bunch of assumptions in there as well that i mentioned you know like having to spend a hundred thousand dollars on renovations which is on the high end um and then here you're paying um some closing costs um to in to incur the property and then closing a cost again when you go to flip it okay so you're looking at about you know on the low end forty thousand dollars here and profit for this property that you could be making. So, okay. all right. So where is this? Okay, so let's go into the third property here. Uh, so this is Bell, sorry, one ten Bell a time to say this <laughs> street. And please, I'm saying it wrong for the last week and a bit. Okay, so let's see here make this bigger here this is where it's located so toronto's over here so and milton's over here and so this is where the property is located so it's just south of kitchener um you know just east of guelph a little sorry west of guelph and uh, here's hamilton here so i'm going to make this a little bit bigger see if everybody can see this all right Okay. Whoop. Okay. So now this is the property from the uh, value assessment report. Okay. So as you can see, it's actually like a decent sized lot with um, the house with an existing property and a and a driveway. Okay, so this property is worth uh, or estimated at three hundred and twenty-six thousand um, dollars. Now, keep in mind the range in that neighborhood is anywhere from one ninety to six hundred and thirty thousand dollars. Okay, there's no existing mortgage on that property. Okay, and here is the uh, trend line and uh, the. Property values in that area have been pretty much following that trend line, which is good. Okay, and then a couple of those properties sold last year, and you could see that they sold around the three hundred thousand um, dollars, and a little bit slightly higher than that. Okay, and uh, here is where they're all located here. So here's the um, the property that we're talking about that's up for auction, and then these are the properties all around it. Okay. 
Okay, so that one uh, is also for auction as well. Okay, now 2434 Sylvia. Okay, so I'm gonna bring this one up. Okay, so this is the property here and it's actually pretty nice. So you can see it looks like um, any of the homes that you would find in Markham. So, so this one's in Oakville and um, you know, not many houses go up for auction in, in Oakville. So I would be very, very surprised if this one did not get canceled uh, closer to the day of the auction. Sorry, let me just grab a cup of a sip of water here. So this one here is estimated at $1.4 million. And uh, this this range number, I would take that with a grain of salt, because as you can see, it goes from 41,000 up to the $2.6 million, right? So it's hard to make a judgment about property values when you've got such a huge range there. And as you can see up in the Oakville area, it, the, trend, the trend line here, and the, um, the housing market has been following that trend line. And the comparables for that area, all of them have been around 1.4. So it's, you know, it's a good number to, to, to gauge this property at. Okay, so now the, um, the fifth property that we're going to talk about, this one is uh, 9154 Dale Road in Coburg and this one I have a lot more information on so we'll go through all of this one in more detail um, so this is what the Google map is on it okay so here is Markham and Toronto here and you can see where Dale is okay uh, so it's over roughly on slightly northeast of uh, Coburg area Okay. And it is a vacant piece of land. There used to be a, a house on it, but there's actually nothing on it anymore. Okay, so that's the, the road that, that it's uh, on. And across the way is more, more vacant land. Okay, um, there are houses or uh, residential plots on both sides of this piece of property that's available, uh, but you'll see it more in detail when we get here. Okay, so this is the property here that you're looking at right here. Okay, so, sorry, right up here. Okay, now when I show you the next map, you're gonna see a little bit more of this greenery. So you see how there's one house here and one house over here. So this piece of land here, this green piece, plus everything that's back here that you're not seeing is what is up for foreclosure. Okay, so I'm gonna show you that here. So, so you could see a little bit more of it here, like it's all green back here, and this is what is for foreclosure here. Okay, so I've just zoomed out because I was more interested to see how far away it was from the main roads and the other highways and what sort of town is close by. And this is like, like it's far from Toronto, uh, but it's actually very, very close to the 401. And that is of interest because um, there's, you know, potential opportunity for, for, for growth and development there. Hold on. So before we go into that, let me show you guys this here. Okay. So this is the actual posting. Okay. So this one is 172 acres. Okay. So that's a huge chunk of land. So you can see there. And you can't actually see it from this photo here, but it's that entire vacant piece of land plus some of that frontage that's on the road there. Okay. Um, sorry. Okay. Um, so there's a description of the land there, it talks about the 172 acres. Uh, there's no um, waterfront there uh it's on a maintained road okay 
And uh, it says that there's a house or a cottage on the property, but that house and the house that was on there has actually been demolished already. So, so there's no house on there yet. Or anymore, I should say. Okay. Um, okay, so that's the property there. And let me just bring up this. Okay, here we go. Here we go. So this one here, you can actually see the property a little bit more. So it's this entire vacant piece of land. And this frontage that's on the road here, a couple of houses on this side and a couple of houses on this side here. But this is the property where the yellow line is roughly of the 172 acres. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So with that, um, oh, let's go into this one here before we go into the, the tender package. So here it just confirms that that's the, uh, the property here. Okay, this one, the, what caught my eye was this $3.6 million price tag that's on the property. So it is, so back in 1989, it was worth that much. Okay. Um, this line here, I would take that with a grain of salt because, you know, you, you can't find a property that has 172 acres on it for sale anymore, right? So I would take this, this chart with a grain of salt. And uh, there's no comparables at all because, you know, we just don't have that volume of size of land being sold in the last 10 years. Okay. So now here is the tender package. So if you were to submit a package, uh, like a bid for this, this is the information that you would have to uh, submit and fill out. And um, here we go. So this one is the starting tender price is 41 or $42,000. Uh, so as you can see, there's a lot of room for potential with this particular property. Okay, now keep in mind that the property tax is about six and a half thousand dollars every year. So if you don't build anything on here for 10 years, you would still have to pay six thousand five hundred dollars every year just to carry this piece of property. Okay, the other thing is that this property was assessed at five hundred and fifty thousand dollars. So not the three million dollars that it was assessed at um, in in 1980s, but only five hundred and sixty thousand dollars. Okay, and so here's another picture of the property uh, that is up for tender and another map of where it's located along with some of the other um, residential communities around there. Okay. Okay, so let me just do a time check because that, that was the uh, five properties Okay, um, so, so those were the five properties that we wanted to talk about today. Uh, so we have another 15 minutes. So why don't we talk about this vacant land? Because uh, right now, um, pretty much all of the ones we've talked about had some a property on it or had some infrastructure on it, uh, sorry, um, a house on it or some infrastructure. The vacant land in Petrola, that one was interesting. And I actually didn't even know where Petrola was until um, until... I started looking on this. So Petrola is way, way west here. So I'll bring this, oh, sorry. Bring that up a little bit bigger so that you can see it. Okay, so there's Toronto and Mississauga over here. And Petrola is way on the other end, closer to Sarnia. Okay, so this would actually be, you know, something to think about if you Ha want to invest in Sarnia because you know there's a lot of job opportunities in, in Sarnia from from the mining um, and you know properties in Sarnia are usually are a little bit cheaper so this is a vacant piece of land so this is what it is on this side over here you can see it's just just nothing just a bunch of trees now there are neighbors already with property on there Okay, um, this is just the other side. So it's just, you know, you've got some, what looks like a commercial piece of property there and then a bunch of vacant land around it. Okay, and then just on the opposite end of the road. 
yeah, not very much there. Like this is really far out. <laughs> Sorry, let me bring this up. Okay. Um, okay, so here is the. Okay, so it just says it's a vacant piece of land for $200, and that's the lot that you would be purchasing. Okay, so this is um, a foreclosure property. So let's say you know you wanted to get into the market of buying a piece of land this might be something that you do because you could actually build on this um you know you, you would have to get water and hydro uh which isn't hard to do because it's already zoned for um for residential get that put in and then build a property on there and rent it out you know and then you would be able to stay in toronto a property in the middle of nowhere okay So let me just uh, open up the floor. Oh, okay, hold on. Let me go through the last couple of slides and then we'll open up the floor for any questions. So the purpose of tonight was just to show you that there are properties in Southern Ontario that are available for closure, are available for foreclosure and up for auctions. Okay, now there is an upcoming webinar on February the 16th. Uh, from 7 to 8 30 so it's the same uh setup as this one where you log in and we go through the presentation but the presentation will be in detail of how to find these foreclosure and auction properties how to analyze them uh like on that excel spreadsheet that we we went through very quickly there and also the value assessment and what to look for uh in that presentation we'll also talk about the risks and the liabilities because uh, with any one of these properties, there's there is a higher level of risk that uh, goes with it than buying an existing property that is just available on MLS. So with this, you can register online at Eventbrite, or you could send me a text at the phone number here uh, with the message webinar, and I will send you the link to the Eventbrite uh, and register online. Uh, unfortunately, this webinar is not a free free session uh it, it is a hundred dollars for that webinar but if you are thinking about going down this strategy i would highly suggest that you attend that session uh, also keep in mind that with all of these training sessions you do get a receipt that you can put towards your taxes if you are going to be buying a property okay um and then the the next thing is a gift to all of you guys for attending. One of the things that I do every month is to hold um, a game night with this game, uh, board game called Cash Flow. It was created by the author of Rich Dead, Poor Dead, Robert Kiyosaki. Uh, so the next game night coming up is Friday, March the 3rd. Uh, it's at the Community Center downtown um, by Bathers and Dundas because uh, that's close to where I live, unfortunately. Um, so you can register online as well at Eventbrite or send me a text with the message cash flow and I will send you um, the, the link for that. This is a, a free event um, and it's a great thing to, to come and play the game because it teaches you what an asset is versus what's a liability. Good investments in terms of what makes a good investment to give you. Uh, there's a lot of investment or strategies out there that don't give you cash flow, um, and this game sort of teaches you that along with you know really what is an asset. So uh, if you do have the time, um, I would highly suggest that you come out to these games. Uh, I only do them once a month, unfortunately, and we only can have five people playing at one time for each board game. Okay. So again, just the disclaimer, and uh, here's my contact information. So I, I will open up the um, Google Hangout for any questions that you guys might have, because uh, I, I know we still have a couple of minutes, but on here is also the, um, sorry, also my website for the mortgage and also for the passive income coaching program that I do. So if you have interest in either one of them, please, um, reach out to me regarding that and I'd be more than happy to talk to you about them.
Okay, so I will um, bring up the Google Hangout now and we can see if there are any questions. Okay, so we have about um, seven or eight minutes left in the time slot. Are there any questions about the properties that was presented tonight? Or is there any uh, other questions that you guys want to bring up? All right. So let me ask here, um, the properties that you guys saw tonight, would you be interested in buying any of them or bidding on any of them? I, I know with you, Ramajit, it sounds like you would be interested in the Oakville one, obviously. <laughs> since you asked about that, but with any of the other ones, would um, would, would you be in, like, with, with, with everybody else that's on the phone, is there any, is, is there one of the properties that we spoke about that you'd be interested in? Well, yeah, Actually, I think it depends a lot on how much down payment we've got to put down, and also, realistically, how much beyond that minimum bid you would have to go to actually land Land the property. Which which property was this one that you're asking about? In general, uh, I'm not sure. For, like for example, if the, the the price tag, if you will, uh, was forty thousand dollars, I'm going to assume forty thousand dollars is not going to be enough to buy it, especially if there's other people mm -hmm. for it, right? And also, I'm wondering. Yeah. See. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I'm also wondering, is there like a 20% down payment or no, like your bid has to be all like cash or how that's supposed to be structured out? Yeah. So with your bid, depending on if it's an auction or foreclosure, you just need to put down 10% or 20%, like they'll, they'll tell you in the forms. So, so you just need 10 or 20% of your bid price. So let's say the property is going for 41,000 and your total bid is 50,000, okay? If in the paperwork it says you have to put down a 10% on your bid, then you just need 10% of your 50,000. And you only need that up front. Then after you win the bid, then they will give you five days or 10 days. It, and that will be on, on the paperwork as well. Then you have that number of days to secure financing, whether you're buying it in cash or you need to get a mortgage. Okay, so that answers one of your questions. The other question is, well, how much do I need to bid to win, right? So, so you are correct in saying it depends on how many people are going to be, be bidding. So you can bet the Oakville one, the Bond, uh, anyone that's close to Toronto, you can bet there's going to be tons of bids on it. It's not going to be, you know, one or two bids. Um, there's going to be upwards of 10 bids, right? Like there was one in Oakville last. Um, it was the the starting bid was so, sorry yeah the starting bid was 50,000 or 60,000 i went in at 170 and the winning bid there was 15 bids and the winning bid was 375,000 okay but keep in mind like that property was uh worth about 600,000 right um so that you know whoever bought it for 375 or whatever they got it for would probably just do an easy fix and then flip it or rent it out right so it really depends on the location of the property and how many other people are going to be bidding on it and of course you know the one in Petrola, you're going to be competing with people from sarnia let's say or people from that township who are close by that would want something manageable within driving distance to where they are you're I would be very surprised if there were people from Toronto bidding on that Petrola one, right? But it's a vacant piece of land for 200. That one might go for $300, might go for 400, you know, but you might have somebody who sees value in it and maybe bid a couple of thousand dollars on it. I would be very, very surprised if anybody bid more than 40,000 on that piece of land. Still develop it, get um, designs, get engineering drawings and all of that. So there's still work uh, to be done and um and you're not going to see money on that for a while right so i would be very surprised if anybody bit more than fifteen thousand on that one okay does that answer your question tony yes it does can i ask a follow-up question yeah of course sorry i, I know i do that a lot uh <laughs> would uh, 
is it possible so do you only get one bid or are you able to see what the highest bid is and then try to overbid that person is there is there anything like that yeah so it's different between an auction and a foreclosure right so so tony like seriously if you really want to get into foreclosures and, and auctions i highly suggest that you attend the um february 16 one and i know that with the timing if you're not able to attend if you register and you let me know that you can't attend i will send you the recording of it okay because there is a the process for foreclosure and a process for auction is different right so that question that you're asking for it depends on if it's a foreclosure or an auction gotcha okay thank you. okay so we have about one minute left so i just want to say thank you very very much everybody for attending um you know i i love talking about real estate and there's so much potential out there for everybody to get into real estate in some form or fashion so whether you're physically buying a property or joint venturing with somebody else and letting them take on a lot of the risk and a lot of the work there's definitely options out there for everybody uh, to get involved and i'm i'm a firm believer that if you are looking to make passive income or find financial independence real estate is a very safe and secure way of doing that and get the knowledge to be able to do it okay so um i will bring up my hold on <laughs> here we go i'll bring up my contact information but i will also send that to everybody on an email as well okay so please feel free to uh reach out to me if um please feel free to reach out to me if you would like some more information on any of the information that we spoke about tonight um, otherwise i hope everybody is already at home and uh, will be getting home safely without having to travel okay so thank you very much everybody for attending and have a good night